Have the events of 2020 made you redefine or question the concept of work-life balance? According to this next audiobook, the concept of striving to find balance between our personal and work lives is a case of misapplying and misunderstanding how we relate to the world and to ourselves. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Yana, and today I'm reviewing The Three Marriages, Reimagining Work, Self, and Relationship, written and read by David White. David White is an English poet known for his work and speaking engagements in the business world. His broad focus seems to be exploring the conversational nature of reality, and I enjoyed listening to his recent interviews on the Making Sense podcast with Sam Harris and on Tapestry on CBC Radio. And even though The Three Marriages was initially published in 2009, it's a timely listen during the COVID era, because so many of us have been starkly confronted with conflicting demands of our relationship to others, ourselves, and to work. And fun fact, White himself has been married three times, although the third time was 2014, well after this title was published. In his recent interview on CBC that I mentioned, White reiterates that many people feel threatened by the idea of stopping and rethinking their lives. And he says, quote, you're going to find another person underneath who actually wants something different than the person you've become in hurrying from place to place. Stopping is a kind of death, unquote. This idea about identity reflects the theme that runs throughout the three marriages. What White illuminates so well is the vocational nature of our relationships, whether to work, self, or others. He helps us reframe our ideas about dedicating ourselves to what matters and encouraging us to question popular ideas of how we value work and personal space and time. Examples he draws from include Jane Austen's life, and I found these among the most compelling because they remind us how much our so-called productivity is influenced by our ability to find focus in spite of forces beyond our control. In Austin's case, her father's decision to move the family to the city of Bath resulted in a temporary but significant drop in Austin's writing output. Whether due to social distractions or depression remains unknown, but this contrasts to some of her most productive years living in a village, where she kept the hinges of the door to her workspace purposely unoiled so she would have advance warning if she was about to be interrupted. White reframes the popular idea we have about Austen when he says, quote, Jane Austen never did marry. Why does that statement call for such reflexive pity? It carries a different meaning if we follow it up. Jane Austen never did marry, and therefore she was given the time and perspective to produce books as well-written as those by anyone who ever lived, unquote. White's opinion here, curiously enough, seems to be a point of disagreement with some Goodreads members, but I think it makes perfect sense given the historic context of marriage and motherhood. Like many literary thinkers, White consistently alludes to human experience as holding universal qualities. And I know from my own experience that this is a pretty seductive way of thinking But most of his stories also draw on European figures, including Rodin, Jane Austen, Joan of Arc, Dante, and Robert Louis Stevenson. I can't help but wonder if expanding this survey to lives lived to thinkers and artists on other continents might have revealed some other important insights. White also makes some generalizations about men and women that I didn't find especially profound or useful like that men prefer to pursue women versus the other way around. But on a related note, how would these dynamics apply in same-sex relationships? It isn't clear based on White's writing. Although this audiobook has its drawbacks, it's a refreshing take on how we configure our identity 
and proximity to all the relationships that define us, and White uses poetry to articulate and illustrate ideas and concepts that make all of this somehow more compelling than it otherwise might be. If you appreciate poetry and non-linear thinking, this is a title to check out. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on your favorite podcast platform. By subscribing to it, you'll help increase the profile of this podcast and chances that other listeners like you will find it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.